Uh, so as, as I'm progressing through campus, things are getting better also Saudi. So we get signed to Penya, for example. Which Even before getting story. signed to, to Ken, Penya, yeah, yeah. I want to ask the question about, because you brought up Lazizi. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. remember one day, <laughs> I'm in the studio. I'm, I'm not in the studio. I I'm remember in my house. that day very well. Because <laughs> me and Blackman lived in yes. Kijiji. Yes. And I'm being told at around 9:30 p.m. Yes. or late, yes. a group called Sauti Sola coming. Yeah, Sauti. Sauti. That means Sauti. 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 So if this is before you meet Wawesh. Yes, way before. Because you came in via Saramitaro. Yeah. Okay, just explain that. So, uh, how did it even start? I don't know if it was before their wedding, because we sang at their wedding. We mm. sang when Sarah walked down the aisle. And Sarah knew about us, I think through church, because also I was, I was I played a lot in church mm. at that time also as I'm now a gigging guitarist outside Sotiso. So I'm playing for other musicians, other artists, and also church. <coughs> mm -hmm. I can't remember the whole sequence to be honest, but we played at their wedding and we knew of each other, or rather we knew each other very well. Mm. So Sarah calls us one evening. I actually used to make those calls a lot. It's like, yeah, you guys, there's this guy in town from you, where, where, where? You guys need to meet him. I'm like, okay, cool. So I tell my boys, let's go meet this guy. You never so Sarah know. was trying to get you guys hooked yes, up. Yes, yes, she really was. I remember because she's the one who introduced you, asked Kanji to you. Oh, really? Yes, ah. that's why you came to Kijiji. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Because okay. Blackman was the Kijiji producer. Yes, 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 he was, yeah. So, yeah, so for Lazizi now, when you were at Allianz, uh, Larry Asego uh -huh. was a teacher at Allianz, one says. He's a French teacher, by the way. He's I didn't even know that. On point. So, Larry is in the arts as well, and he knew about us, and he saw us always jamming at Allianz outside the corridor at Allianz, one says, and everything. And he was like, listen, boys. You have an amazing song, you have an amazing songs rather, but this Java song, you need to record it. This Lazizi song, you need to record it. Here is 12,000. Go record. Like, what? What? Okay, Sawa. So, yeah, he gave us the money and we went to Blackman to record Lazizi. And funny enough, I don't know what happened that night. So, we got there, I think, around 7 p.m. I remember telling my dad, because this is after school. I think we just decided after campus in the evening, I was like, guys, let's go record this song. Let's go to Blackman. Because I also knew about him because he had gotten me cars and all that stuff. Mm. Like, yeah, let's go to Blackman. So we get there. I tell my dad, like, I'm not coming because the way he saw us, like, this is until morning. Mm. So I told my dad, I, I won't be able to come home today. And I had exam the next day. And I needed a book from home. Remember, there are no borders, there are no Ubers, yes. nothing. <laughs> my dad is the only person I can talk to. My brother is in school. My mom is, my dad was retrenched at that time, and my mom is working. Mm. So I have the audacity to tell my dad, bring me this, uh, I don't remember, it was a calculus book, I think. Please, if you can, if you're coming to town, come with this book, because I really need it, because I have an exam tomorrow morning. So this is now the night of the recording. <laughs> <laughs> of recording Lazizi on an attempt of recording Lazizi because yes, it didn't really yes, happen. It, yeah. So what happened is we were so we were jamming the song, just about to record, and then the lights just went. Oh my god. Imagine. Then we were there waiting the whole night, hopeful that it will come. It came back, I think, for 30 minutes, then went again. So we had to sleep there. Because also it was very late. Yep. We live far, maybe yep. in Karyubangi. Uh, was it? It was their house, or was it Kijiji? It, it was. It was South Sea. It was South Sea. That's where it was the house. It was a studio, was, but then yeah, the studio the had house. had our house section. Yes, yes. Because so I was, was asleep in there, ah. and I was hearing you guys recording. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. So yeah, we had started, then the lights disappear, stuff like that. It's like it wasn't meant to be. I don't know why. Yeah. So, was that your first time in studio? Uh, technically, yes. I had been in studio to do a song with BN, actually, just the two of us, for a series that Chris Adwar was working on. So it was a song for the series. That was the first time I, myself, actually recorded in studio. Mm. Acoustic guitar and BN sang. And it was just the two of us. I don't know if Chimano was available, I was in school, but it was just the two of us. So this is the, now the first proper, proper... All, 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 all four, four of us yes. and proper full-out session. Uh, yeah, so... 
it just didn't happen that night. Like it was just like fate, I guess. It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. Uh, but we we're still good friends at that time. It's just like okay, it is what it is. Uh, it's fine. We'll we'll see what 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 happens. So the next morning, I meet my dad at the <laughs> stage. <laughs> Because I had to go to where he is. You, I can't tell him now. Okay, okay now come to his <laughs> view. I, I, I had to go to town, to the stage, wait for him. I had a phone, of course, at that time now. He came, gave me the book, and he was angry. Like, why you, this music? Oh, hey, 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 you know, you know, you need to concentrate on school, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, yeah, I'm sorry, Dad, I'm sorry. Okay, I need to go do my exam. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so I take the book and I go to school. So that's how that Lazizi story went. So it didn't happen at that time. Uh-huh. And then now, uh, how we meet Wawesh and Ninka, who own, uh, used to own Penya Africa then, they came together to own Penya Africa, was our kind of second solo concert at Allianz now. Uh-huh. I think yes, the first one was late, at Gote. Yeah. Now this one is at Allianz. Allianz okay. And this time we, we've gathered now proper hey, fan you've base. Got a- Mm. ground you are known within um, Alliance. Um, Baya, um, Baya. And it's like without any <laughs> With, song out. On radio. <laughs> without nothing on radio. We haven't even been in the studio. So we... we <laughs> hey, the story, oh my gosh. So just before that, we... Jambi Koikai mm-hmm. is our good friend. She's also in, into arts at Alliance. So we used to jump together. We used to you know, hang out together. The fun times artists. together. Yeah. yeah. Fun times together. Then in one of our lunch dates at uh, Kenchik, having our 30 shillings fries, we're like, ah, but hey, Jambi, so you can be our manager. It's like, yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, cool. Okay, so, so from now on, you're our manager. Okay, cool. <laughs> so let's do this. So yeah, so she started managing us. And then we, the, first, the first thing for us to do was to do a proper concert at Allianz. So that's what we started organizing. So like, okay, how much is it? Should you do it at the auditorium? How much is the auditorium? It was like, I think 15K. Like, wow, you pay it at Okawapi. What do we do now? Okay, cool. It's like, no, we'll find a way, don't worry. And then, so Allianz, we were known already. We knew the, the what are they called? The director of Allianz and all the people that work at Allianz. We, they knew us and we knew them. So we're like, okay, let's, let's talk to them. And once we make the money, we can give them the money for the venue. Mm. So we decided to do it right outside, not outside, outside. There's a, where they, there's a lot of exhibitions that go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So usually there are concerts there, mm. in that section. So it's like... Inside, outside. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's like if you have a mini concert, that's a nice place to, 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 ha- to do a concert. So this concert, we are so anxious. Uh, still the four of us, now we get a bass player and a percussionist. Mm-hmm. So we stay with Aizo, the percussionist, and then we get combo. Uh. as our bass player. So we rehearse for this gig just up our Leon's downstairs at the basement. We rehearse, we rehearse, Jambi's taking care of everything, making sure we are fine. Well, at that level, <laughs> whatever we fine was <laughs> defined yes. at that level. And so that gig we charged, I think we charged 300 shillings and about 300 people came. <sighs> First of all, we were in shock. We're like, all these people, how do they know about us? So 300 guys came, or the, maybe two, two something, towards 300. So we made 90K. Mm-mm, in that mm-mm, mm-mm. We cut expenses, the venue was 15K, uh, then the rest we divided by ourselves. Or we paid the instrumentalists. Mm. Excuse me, paid the musicians, and then the money stayed. And also that gig also, Lazizi, was a big, big hit. And we're like, okay, this song it has something. You know, mm. and then also the other song. So the, the Asubui was also a big hit. Blue uniform. Blue um, uniform was a big hit at that point. All of them not recorded. So we had played them so so much for small corporate gigs and stuff like that. Now we're starting to get corporate gigs. And then that's so that very concert is when is where Wawesh and Ninka show up because Stan uh-huh. invited them. And was Stan signed under them? Stan was. Did, Stan, did Peña exist? No, so Peña, Peña, Rags to Records was what it was before, in Buru. It's a studio called Rags to Records in Buru Buru. Stan and Wawesh were family friends. Wawesh is also a Karibangi South guy. Mm. He just mo- he moved to, to uh, Switzerland. Sweden. Yeah, Sweden. 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 Sweden with the mom when he was very young. But his family, his brothers and everyone were in Karibangi South. And they knew Stan. Mm. And they were that age group. So when Wawesh now became a producer in, in Sweden and was a big time producer in Sweden and wanted to come back home. So I think someone connected them with Stan 
and started working together and it was like really it was such amazing music mm. so i was like okay now it's time to come back home so i'm gonna come to kenya so i came back and they had started working on stan stuff so stan and us were very close already at that time i think he even played at that gig if i'm not wrong so stan invited wawish and ninka <laughs> bn this is how you tell a story <laughs> I'm in this. Uh, you're inside. I'm inside. Uh, yeah, so uh, Wawesh and Ninka come in to the concert. And I can tell you for free, even how Lazizi did not work with Blackman at that time, mm-hmm. we had been, it was our first time, yes, in studio, but we had approached a lot of producers, big time producers at that time, that I don't have to mention names, mm-hmm. that turned us down. Mm. because they are either afraid of the sound they don't know how to market this sound if it's yeah, marketable but... <laughs> because it was very new very fresh it, it was like af- acoustic afrofusion yeah afrofusion itself was very new exactly yeah and then now on top of that you guys are doing it acoustically Can't be yeah it was just its own thing yeah, it, yeah. I, I can't even explain it so everyone was just scared understandably so i mean there was no bad feelings it's like okay cool so we'll just wait or whatever happens happens so i wish came with his fresh mind and fresh thinking and Ninka as well who Ninka had been out, Ninka was the owner of Rax2 Records mm. and she's Dutch yes and now Awesh had come from Sweden and Awesh now is a producer yes and Stan used to record that Rax2 Records so Stan is the one who linked the Awesh and Ninka up to form Penya Records ah, yeah, 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 Stan yeah, is yeah, very yeah, yeah. instrumental in all these things yep. really. very instrumental yep. so I so saw they hear us playing and they're very impressed This is on a Friday night. They literally tell us Monday come to studio. Like what? Yeah, Monday come to studio. Like okay, great. So Monday we make our way to Buru. It was very close f- for me because I'm, <laughs> I'm in Karibangi South. It's right there. You're not been made to come this other side. <laughs> Ubabini. <laughs> Ubabini. I was like, ah, perfect. At least within my area. So we go to Rags to Records. We go into the studio and we first of all hear Stan's music that they've been working on and we are so wowed. That's Stan's first album. It's mm. called The One with Wangeshi. Mm. We're like, what? What sound is this? Because it's just fresh, new, it's Swahili, it's just, it's just amazing. So we're like, okay, we are ready to record. When do we start? Ready, ready, ready. So they were renovating the studio at that time. I think they were moving the studio because now they had merged together. Mm. So we could only record in Wawesh's bedroom, in his house in Buru. So he, he got a house in Buru. That he was renting mm. and yeah we were recording now in his bedroom so literally just a laptop a microphone that's it that's how you and, first and recorded a, and a sound card of course yeah, yeah that's how we recorded now the whole album because we were ready even yeah. the whole album. You, yes. had, you had all the songs ready all the songs ready they were all written even some didn't make it <laughs> many songs did not make it to the two months album up until today they're just there hanging <laughs> hanging in the balance <laughs> But yeah, that's how we recorded uh, now Mwanzo, including Lazizi in the album.